Hi, everyone. Welcome to Stunting. I am Diana O'Gilvie, Femi Communications Manager, and it is my pleasure to introduce you to Sekou Luke, coming all the way from Harlem, New York. What up, yeah. What up, what up, what up, my sister? How you doing? Big I'm up doing to make a bad way. And also coming to New Harlem, New York, but by ways of Jamaica, Jamaican born, and then took my journey here. So definitely always remembering my roots and where I'm from. Always, <laughs> always. And we always give thanks for our strong Jamaican roots for sure. Always give thanks. Oh my gosh. I'm like that we produce so many amazing things from that island. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing the talent that comes out of that space, yourself included. Fimi, what's happening with the Fimi marketplace? Everything. Big awesome. things happening. Awesome. Awesome. Yes, for sure. And you, a product of the island as well. So <laughs> um, let's dive in, say cool. So you are a photographer. Um, so tell us mm -hmm. about the journey into, into art. What's that been like for you? The journey into art. I, I You know, what I call myself, though, I, I, I say myself, in general, when people ask what I do. I, I'm a creator. I'm an artist. Like the, 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 the hat that I wear changes. At one time, I was more of a performing artist. I was an actor, singer. I played guitar, doing that to the stage. Performance was a thing. I got, I was working on a short film once, and I got a little glimpse into the edit, and I sat in the editing room, and I was like, oh, this is where all the action is really happening. And that's what turned me on to being behind the camera. And so uh -huh. I got behind, got a chance to see, oh, the magic is not just in front. The magic is really happening in the back. So that's what got me into filmmaking and photography. And that was maybe about, I don't know, I would say nearly 15 years, 15 to 20 years ago. So I've been shooting now for about 15 years. Wow. 15 to 20 years, yeah. Yeah, that, yeah. I got I caught the bug from um, working on that project. And then from then I was like, I want to make films. I want to tell stories. I want to capture and recognizing that there's so much rich creativity that also that depth and actually the majority of it, in my opinion, now sometimes happening behind the lens as opposed to being a performer. So that's what turned me off. Wow, it's an amazing story. So what, what, what are some of the things that you have worked on over the years that have, you know, in, in your opinion, have showcased you, your growth as an artist? Mm. Later. You know, well, I think, I think what's happening now for me is I'm realizing that all these journeys and all these paths that I've taken in my, in my creative journey, so everything from, the actor path, the photographer path, the director path. It's really all about being able to then get be in the space that I am now where I'm able to speak multiple languages in a production space and being able to talk to talent, being able to talk to, um, being able to speak to uh, about lighting, being able to speak about cameras. It's really come all about from this journey of doing so many different things to this place. So, that's that's kind of so to talk about what what I've worked on. So now I think I'm specializing in storytelling. My my big key thing is I do short doc storytelling as like my as like what I feel is kind of like the thing the the space I flow very strongly in. So whether it be for example of um working with the Creative Genius Report, we went to Paris Fashion Week and we did this um created three short films um around this hair hair key hair stylist. Jawara, who's blowing up now, he just did Beyonce's cover for Vogue and doing all this stuff. But we did made three short films. And, and in that moment, I realized this is my flow. This is what I'm doing. I'm shooting, I'm storytelling, I'm, I'm capturing audio, I'm doing sound, I'm doing the kind of this, this camera and another person engaging in the space. Yeah. So that really is what I, 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 I love being as is a, is a, is a, a storyteller engaging with, a, with whoever my my subject is whether it be working uh, another project that's been quite excited work with um the choreographer for lizzo for example also with creative genius for doing some storytelling follow story when they were getting ready for the vmas and the today show so that's kind of some of the work that i really love doing where it's where it's it, it's intimate it's short docs intimate storytelling yeah I, that's I love that I love that because like I feel like you've like finally come into your own to to put on that armor of of a creative yeah. storyteller you know and that journey exactly exactly so even now like um you have poured into um nfts with your um 
with your notes from Harlem. So can we can you talk to yeah. us about that? Yeah, absolutely. And the, the Notes from Harlem project to me was very special because that came out, that really is a project that was not meant to be shared publicly. It's really, I, I, I find that using my, my camera, when, I'm with, when I spend time with my camera, it's either one, sometimes I'm creating projects for, for work or producing, collaborating with others. And then there's some work that I've done, which is very personal. Um, taking my camera and going for a walk and just experiencing the neighborhood, that's a personal thing for me. That's, that's my personal stress relief. That's my personal like recenter, the way that creating can really align yourself um, with, with, with the space. And, and so that was all those shots that I'd taken were just me during the pandemic, walking around, dealing with my anxiety, dealing with my stress. Oh no, there's no money coming in. What's happening next? So I, I, I started documenting the neighborhood and also recognizing, let me document and hold hold a, a space for the neighborhood to just see ourselves in this space. You know, this is a on once in a lifetime kind of thing that's happening. I wanted to to capture it so we can remember where we what we went through. So the yeah. Notes from Harlem is a, is projects is images of of Harlem throughout the pandemic and the Black Lives Matter movement that happened after the killing of George Floyd. Um, the neighborhood really came together. The neighborhood really became a space of a lot of life and, and community togetherness. And for me, I was walking through the space and just meeting my neighbors, getting to know the space. And out of that, that's where the work of um, Notes from Harlem came. The reason it became public, um, somebody from the Aloft Hotel had reached out to me. They said, hey, we see you posting some things here and there on Instagram. You need to put it into a show. I was like, no, this is personal. No, this is just, this is just me. They're like, no, this is for the community. And I was like, okay, this is for the community. So was able to put that project out, um, did another full showing at uh, the Kinte Royal Gallery. And I'm hoping that we'll be in the fall coming up, I'll have another showing of the full collection, which is now almost 30 pieces um, of, of images, their images and their videos, content tied to it. Um, so that's the, the Notes from Harlem project. Um, additionally, the NFT then was, I was, I'd always wanted to get into this NFT space, but I've never knew how. And I actually tried to dabble in it by myself. And when I saw Finny and what you were doing, I was blown away. I was really blown away because it was a way of, it was marrying not just, oh, let's play with an NFT, but marrying my, cult, my cultural reference and, and my a very strong philosophical reference to me is that we need to build our own table. We need to create our own for ourselves. And that's kind of how I work in my workflow. So when I saw what Fimi was doing, I'm like, oh, it's aligned. I really need to be a part of this. <laughs> what, what did you learn about yourself in, 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 in creating that Notes from Harlem collection? I, I think it was a solidifying of me recognizing you know as artists and as storytellers when you can own your tools when you own your workflow when you own like your way of doing it and you realize okay that that's what you, you know you can sell you celebrate everybody else but you're like okay i i know my flow and it was a way of kind of when, when i was being able to mount the show it was the first time i was able to mount a full solo show of my work and it's an important thing for an artist to be able to look back at your work and see yourself and, and see yourself uniquely. So that's really what I, I, I got from it was, was very much a unique understanding of the role that I, I bring to the table that's uniquely different than what everyone, everyone else brings, you know? And mm. still being able to celebrate everyone, but see what you're doing. Right, right. I love, yeah. that. I love that. Um, so, so you forayed into NFT, so you had started out, um, with uh with a, with a with a couple of images and so what has been your yeah. experience with the the Fimi platform so far oh so my experience with the Fimi marketplace is it's been personal and it's very it's it's physic like i said it's philosophically aligned with me it's intimately aligned with my values and it's it, it, it's where i want to build i was work when i first started dabbling i was i you know i put some stuff off open sea and like when we talked, and like I was lost at sea. It was kind of like it was just out there. If you're not tied to something, it's hard for your story to break through. 
And I recognize that in the FIMI space, my story can be seen. My story can be told in that marketplace because I'm aligned to that marketplace. So that's I, I, I love the work you're doing. Honestly, if you, you, I wish I, I talk about it. So now it gives me something to talk about. When I share to people, oh, I'm doing an NFT. It's not just that. It's actually look at this marketplace of of, of Caribbean born from a Caribbean space that's global. Look what they're doing. Look at the phenomenal work they're doing. And this is a, the new model of how we build for the future. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think yeah. you really, really succinctly and really well, because that's that's one of the cornerstones for us. You know, we are we are of Jamaican origin, but we are global because art is global, storytelling is global, and and, and it's it's from yeah. so-called underserved and underrepresented communities where we don't see ourselves. Mm -hmm. You go you go on our marketplace and you see artists from Africa and, and their amazing works, you know, artists from the Caribbean, women as well. Yeah. So that's something that is really, really cornerstone to our to our ethos. So thank you mm -hmm. for organizing that yeah. and joining the party. Oh, I'm so glad to be. A, but when you, I think as artists, one of the bridges you cross, you have to cross is building value. You know, really building value in your work. You know, that's one of the things I've even learned with the No to Harlem project was was really value in my work. When when I was when I sold, fortunately through that the, the show. I've been able to sell now maybe seven of my pieces. When I sold my first piece and being able to have a price tag to it and somebody actually pay this money to purchase your work, value is being placed in it. And, and, and value is something that, what I like about what's happening in the Finnish space is that we are, we, I apologize. <laughs> it's I'm New York, it's heart. New York. New York City, that's how you do it. What I love about the Finnish marketplace we're agreeing on building value together. Value is a, it's a shared agreement that happens um, versus just being out on your own trying to say, hey, I'm over here, I'm valuable. No, we're saying we agree. And I love how you, you've created the space of so many talented artists that are really incredible work, really incredible work out there. Yeah, we are, we are extremely lucky because like, all of our artists are fire. All of you guys are fine. <laughs> yeah. It's it's been it's just just been this amazing um and, and amalgamous and and, 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 and and organic growth because we champion we champion the artists. I mean you are the lifeblood of the NFT marketplace, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so Thank you. um what has been your experience with the with the FIMI team so far? Oh, the FIMI team has been wonderful. My experience with them, they've been uh, it's been it's very personalized but it's also very professional and polished and that's why i like I, being able to see a space where there's there's family community there there's somebody i can reach out to and say hey how do i do this oh hey what is what's a seller because for for art for a lot of us at least for me i'm going to speak for myself this also has been a learning curve of learning about just the crypto spaces the, the thing that's so challenging, especially for, for people of color, for black and brown people, this crypto space, market space, we're not, we're not as present there. We're not as, as seen in that space. And just to, that, just even to have access to be in that marketplace is a big thing. So when yeah. I walk into, the, into a FIMI event and I see myself and I see other people that look like me, I'm like, wow, this is incredible for a, a crypto space to have that. You know, so my experience has been, it, it, it's not just personalized, but really informed and really knowledgeable. They know their stuff. And, and so the marriage of that is, is really exciting to me. You know, I just would really want to tell our viewers that you showed up for Femi in a big way at our launch in New York City um, on Juneteenth. You know, so thank you so much for providing um, a few pieces from your notes from Harlem and you came through and you blessed us. And, you know, like Femi has, Femi was officially born. So just thank you so much for, for showing up for us. And if that's not, you know, love and family, I don't know what is. Oh, that is family. That, and I was like, your fam family's coming to my town. I got to take care of you. So it was, I'm so glad that you launched it in New York, that you launched it during that time, during the, the conference that was happening. But yeah, it's, it's um, I, I feel very much aligned with where you're, what you're doing and the work you're doing. So I'm excited to be on this journey together. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, Seku, thank you so much for joining us for this um, episode of Stunting. Um, let us know yes. coming up because I do believe you have a barbershop 
um, series coming up as well? Or what, what's what's in the works? What's next? What's okay, going? what's in the world? Let me tell you what's in the world. So, and the, the, the way I figured out, just to say this, what I figured out with the NFTs for me, it's, it's using them really almost as certificate at, of authenticity for my work. So with most of the, with almost all the NFTs that I'm selling, you're, you can get real, you're getting actual tangible art with it. So you may purchase an NFT, you get the tangible art. So it's continuing to grow the collection. In the fall, I'm, I'm anticipating a full, like I said, a full showing, hopefully September, October of the Notes from Harlem collection again. We'll be adding in, I've been going through and meeting, um, looking at the barbershop culture in Harlem. And I've been shooting some images from that. So that's going to be added to the show. Um, additionally, I have another asset that I, the project that I'm working on called Unscripted. Um, and this is where we, we, we interview legends of music. So that's a whole nother little part of my production piece. But we're coming up in the fall. We're, we'll be doing a live show, hopefully. So I'll, you'll hear a little bit about that, too, as well. So some exciting things going to happen. Amazing, amazing. I mean, yeah, there's so many stories to tell, and I'm glad that you are at the helm as a storyteller. Oh, thank you. Thank you. And I'm, and I'm so glad to be partnered with you in this process and this journey as we grow and build together. Indeed, indeed. Sekouk, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, hunting. Uh, it's been an amazing conversation, enlightening. It's always good to talk to you, my brother. Always good, always good. <laughs> Great. Join Take us care. next Thank time. You. Join us next time on the next episode of Stunted.